Why are the tops of my trees turning brown? What's up, guys? This is Mark Russell with another episode of 770 Arborist something or another. But today we're going to talk about a call that I got yesterday. And it's such a classic call. People call me and they're like, Mark, the tops of my trees have all of a sudden started turning brown. Why? I asked him, why? when did they get planted? He said, like five years ago. And in my head, I'm going, oh, I know what's going on with these. So... We are going to show you exactly what was happening. And please, if you have landscapers plant, arborvitae, Leland cypress, any type of tree that needs, I'll, I'll hold you in suspense, that needs what? That needs what? And what do you have to do with it? Okay, so here we go. You ready? So he calls me. And he's like, hey, the tops of my trees are turning brown. And I'm like, when did that start happening? He's like, a week ago. I'm like, how old are they? Like, five years and I'm like thinking to myself, oh boy, you need to send me some pictures because I know what's going on. And so the second he sends them, I was like, I know exactly what's happening. So here we go. You guys ready for this? This is what we saw. Okay. This is the house that is um, effectively, take a look. Look at all those nice trees back in there. And you're like, oh my gosh, those are nice trees. That really stinks. So here we go. Picture number one. Oh, wow, look at that. It's like, it's like super green and bushy right here and then all super stressed. And if you guys notice, check this out. Here's what I want to show you. You ready? Check this out. Can you see right here how like right here and here is not so big, but then right here it gets all bushy. Huh, that's really interesting, right? And so we take that out. Let's go to the next one. Next one he sends, uh-oh, not good. Now all of a sudden, we see the same pattern. Look at this, right at that level, guys, I'm telling you, at this point, I absolutely, because look, right here we see again, problem. We go to the next one. Here we go, a race. Get over here to the next. Oh, that's the same image. Okay, uh, one, two, same image on two. Oh my gosh, please don't tell me I saved that image three times. Um, let's go to the fourth image, Russell. Oh, oh, I'm killing my images because I'm still on the art. Oh. I'm so irritated. I'm so irritated. I'm not going to restart this video. I'm going to just open up my history. Oh, stop looking. Stop looking. The surprise. I just ruined my video with the surprise. Hold on just a second. Here we go. There. Okay. This was image number three. Uh-oh. Russell, get with your technical stuff. Next time you shoot a video, figure out that when you turn on the, the marker and you switch tabs. Okay. I'll just get with it here. Look, guys. Look at this. Look, 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 look. It's so obvious. And I hate this because, look, you can see right here. Look at that. It's a look at the look at the horrible growth. And then right here too, here, there, right there. Do you guys see the horrible growth? Good growth at the bottom, bad growth at the top. Okay, and this is the reason. And it's so super frustrating. Guys, when you go with the cheapest bid, please understand you get what you pay for. The guy who puts these trees in for 300 bucks a piece doesn't know the simple thing. Okay, you need to hire, this guy paid for 15 trees, 300 bucks a piece. The guy who put them in had no idea, didn't give him good customer service and didn't say one simple thing. And this is the thing he should have said. Hey, Mr. Customer, in about two to three years, two to three years from now, the trunks are gonna start getting thicker. So, I mean, and look, one more picture. Hello, hello. I, I mean, do I need to draw it out? I'm going to draw it out because it's so fun. Hey, look at this area. That's a little stressed. So why? Why are they getting stressed, right? And it was so simple, guys. I'm telling you, when I was on the phone with them, I knew right away. I knew right away, and you guys may have already seen because the, the, the big reveal was already given, right? So when you put a tree in the ground, it can wobble from the wind, right? So you typically put up straps on the tree. And in this case, it's so obvious because they were all right at chest, hip to chest level and that's straps. And guess what? That cheap contractor didn't tell the guy after he spent $4,500 
And now he has to spend about three, four grand, whatever, to get them all removed five years later because now they're all dead. Take the, st Russell, take the straps off your tree. Here are the straps. I told him, I hated to say it. I told him, I said, look, you don't have to pay me 149 to come out to assess because I already know what's going on with your trees. Here's what you need to do. Go take your camera, put it on the trunk of the tree and look and tell me if you see some guy wire straps, some pieces of twine, some something right around the trunk. So here's how it happens. And I've had my caffeine this morning. <laughs> when people plant trees, the trees grow up and effectively you need to make sure that the wind doesn't blow them over. So they put guy wires right up to the trunk. Well, People forget, hey, look at the nice trees. They're so awesome. And three or four years later, trunks get big. Guy wires do what's called girdle the tree. Okay, so the trunk is getting bigger. The guy wires constrict. The sap is trying to flow up the cambium layer of the trunk. Many people don't know this, but the primary sap movement within a trunk system of the tree is right underneath the bark called the cambium phloem xylem layers because the inside of the trunk only holds storage of material, doesn't do a lot of up and down flow. It only does in and out in the ray cells. So what happens is when you girdle the trunk, then all of a sudden there can't be sap flow. And then what happens is this exact, so here's what it looks like. Okay, are you guys checking that out? Look, and then it assimilates. There's the strap right there. It assimilates the, um, uh, just like Microsoft, you will be assimilated. It assimilates the twine. And then look, now he can't even get it out of there. You can't even cut because it's too late. The, the trunks have grown around it. And now the cambium layer, like here's the strap and it gets thick, 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 thick right on the strap. And then the bark comes around and the bark is trying to come around, but it cannot connect because there's no cambium layer. Sometimes it does like on an oak, but on these uh, arborvitaes, they're done. And I hate it because look, look at how nice that is. That is so much money. He spent 4,500 and five years. Now it's to spend three grand to get him taken out, plus another at least 45. So you're nine, $12,000 in. Should have just paid for the expensive guy to do the right work, to give you the good information so that you didn't wind up in this problem. Thank goodness for the internet. Thank goodness that when you hire your cheap contractor, you can watch a video like this and remember to take the guy wires off. It's very important. Guys, if you have any questions, hit me up. Send me a video. Love to help you. If you have questions, comment. Please make sure if this is valuable content for you, please hit the like button, subscribe, share it. I guarantee you, if you're in the South, you probably have some friends with similar situations. Maybe, maybe not. No one even cares about their trees. They're busy doing their stuff. It's only tree nerds like us that even care. Guys, I hope you have an awesome, happy holiday, okay? And other than that, if you're in the North Atlanta area and you need some awesome tree health care, give us a call at 770-ARBOREST. And also, one more time, like, subscribe, share, hit the notifications button. Other than that, if you've had trees planted, go check and figure out if the guy wires have been taken off. Finally, one last thing about guy wires. When you take them off, if it starts to assimilate, get the little razor in there and get it cut very carefully, but don't damage the bark. If you damage the bark, you'll in, invite uh, uh, rot into your tree. And uh, you, if you watch my other videos with decay, sometimes it assimilates. If you can catch it early enough, you can cut them, get it out, and the tree will survive. In this case, there I don't think there's any way. Happy holidays to you guys from 770 Arborist. You guys take care. Bye-bye.